Welcome to my doctoral thesis presentation, Proving Plant-Wide Integration. I'm Karen Dodge. According to the manufacturers and engineers I've interviewed, there's a lot of different processes going on every day in their businesses. We've got sequential control, process control, drive and motion control on the plant floor. And then there's maintenance, business issues, scheduling, order tracking, production monitoring, and the list goes on. And everybody wants this thing called plant-wide integration, which basically means all the different processes and operations working together. Now, that information has to do three things. It's got to control the various components. It's got to communicate between these components. And you have to be able to see what it's doing anytime you want to so you can make decisions. Visualization. So how do you get information to do this? You have to build an integrated architecture. And that's my thesis. So I worked with the IT department and we figured out how to digitize my lab partner, Bill Masters, and plug him into a typical plant floor to show you how Rockwell's automation's integrated architecture helps deliver efficient plant-wide control. This totally <clears throat> sucks. Bill, I'm giving a presentation right now. I don't care. When you asked me to help, I thought you meant borrow my notes. <laughs> then you said, it'll be just like the Matrix. <laughs> this ain't like the Matrix. Mm. And I don't think you put me in an integrated architecture. I've been talking to some of the other information in here, and we definitely don't speak the same language. I, I think I'm in a more traditional setup. <clears throat> okay, well, where are you right now? Hang on. I'll try to focus. I'm in raw materials and a PLC on, like, a device-level network. Oh, oh, that's excellent. Okay, so now all you need to do is zip over to batch processing. That's a DCS system on a control-level network to demonstrate how the two types of controllers work together seamlessly over two different networks. <laughs> Karen, I'm not so sure this system's built on an integrated architecture. I am, <clears throat> obviously. An efficient, integrated control architecture gives you the strengths of the individual components working together as a system. Here, the device level network handles lots of small bits of information moving fast. For things like measuring and weighing, a control level network carries bigger pieces of data like temperature and pressure variables to the DCS controller. Oh. <clears throat> uh, hi, Bill. You see? I told you this system wasn't integrated. Oh, and how can you tell? You see this wall? Uh -huh. It means I can't get from the PLC to the DCS without adding programming logic or hardware to the mix. Mm -hmm. Let me modify your diagram. Oh, great. This is where a lot of people are at. And you can't get from here to there without different software packages and a lot of programming and the gateways to convert the information. This ain't an integrated architecture. Uh -huh. All right then, Bill. What is it? Hmm? Hello, Bill. Hello. P-R-O. I can't make out the rest. Looks like somebody dropped it or <laughs> kicked it out of frustration. <laughs> I'm going to say it's Profibus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all the wires. It can't be Profibus. Come on. Because they use the same network for everything. That's like saying everybody named Karen is you. Different Profibus networks have different last names, like Profibus DP, Profibus PA, Profibus FMS, uh, okay, I get Profibus the blah, blah, Are blah, blah, blah. It works like this. Let's say that A is a device level component, it wants to send a message to C, which is on the control level. To do that, they have to go through a processor, B. The real problem is that if you want to send that message from A to C, you have to physically program the processor to do it. You have to tell it to accept the message from A and send it to C. Lots of time and money gets wasted. Mm. This is what you want, NetLinks. It covers Ethernet IP, ControlNet, and DeviceNet so you can have the right kind of network for your application. With the NetLinks setup, you still use gateways, but you don't have to do any programming to get from one network to the next. That's lots faster and less expensive than the other way. Ah, and you can upload and download information across all the networks. <laughs> I'm right, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, how would you design a control system if it's up to you? Well, 
all the controllers would, um, I don't know, use the same software. Do control in the same way. Y yeah. Use <laughs> the one controller to do all the different kinds of control. Motion, drives, discrete, and process, right? Just nod. That's what Logix gives you. Multidiscipline control that uses one programming software package. Everything is designed to work together to tie all the various control functions in your plant into a single integrated system. All right, so basically they all work together. And that's, that's the control part <laughs> in control, communication, visualization. And going through networks is all about communication. Hey, Karen, I figured out a way to get all the way from DeviceNet to Ethernet IP and out on the internet. <laughs> You're not going to those sites, are you, Bill? I keep telling you, those women won't go out with you. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to help you here. Uh -huh. I figure when I'm on the internet, I can see right into the integrated architecture from Netlinks. If I leave now, I can get there in time to demonstrate the whole communication thing. Uh, I'll lay the groundwork. Netlinks is Rockwell Automation's integrated communication architecture. Networks need to do three things in a plant. First, they have to coordinate devices for fast, precise control. Second, they have to support configuration, setup, and programming. And third, they have to let you collect data on demand for HMIs, databases, or for business analysis. So where's Bill when I need him? Bill. Uh. I'm back. Uh huh. Sorry it took so long, but I met someone virtual. <laughs> Where are you? Uh, Control Logics, controlling the packaging line at this plant. So, you ready to take a trip? <laughs> I guess so. Since Netlinks is supported in different interfaces, information can come from anywhere and be used anywhere in your plant. So Bill's Control Logics, the PLC, can send data to the Process Logics, the DCS. And once more, Control Logics and Process Logics utilize the same hardware, networks, and IOs. This integrated architecture is slicker than even I imagined. In the time it took you to say that, I've been through this plant over 2,000 <laughs> times. I've monitored temperatures, changed speeds, controlled motions, took some stuff over to diagnostics, I even checked the safety glasses inventory, ordered more, and scheduled the delivery. He's such an eager beaver. <laughs> I've been from shop floor to top floor to shop floor to the internet and back. And I'm only one piece of information. There's thousands of us in here doing stuff all the time. <laughs> all right, slow down, Bill. OK, so where are we? So we proved an integrated architecture is better for control and communication. Now, if we can just demonstrate how it supports visualization. That's the Let's key. do this part my way. <laughs> I got a picture that's worth a thousand words. Just tell them about the old way. Well, it's not the old way. Lots of people still do it this way. <laughs> not after they see what I'm going to show them. Whoa! <laughs> An architecture isn't truly integrated until you add visualization because you have to see what's going on in a system to use it effectively. In a lot of situations, if you need to monitor or troubleshoot a particular operation or device, you actually have to go to that part of the plant and look at that specific HMI monitor. But now, Rockwell Automation has introduced View Anywhere, which will let you, well, I'm not supposed to tell you, Bill is. Okay, 